What do you call your aunt or your cousin? Are they your family, your relatives, or your extended family? What about the wife of your brother? What do we normally call that person? Today, we're talking about family. And for the answers to those questions, let's listen to the conversation. How many people in your family? There are five children in my family, three brothers and a sister. Where do you come in your family? Are you the oldest, the youngest, or are you in the middle? I'm in the middle. I have two older brothers, an older sister and a younger brother. Do you have any step siblings or half siblings? No, they're all my direct brothers and sisters. So what's the difference between a step sibling and a half sibling? A step sibling is a brother or sister who is not related to you by blood, but they are related to you through marriage. If your mom or dad remarries and that other partner has kids already, then those are your step siblings. Half siblings are related to you by blood. If one of your biological parents has a child with someone who is not your biological parent, then that child is your half sibling. Do you have a big extended family? I do, I have lots of relatives. My dad had five siblings and my mom had four brothers. So I have lots of aunts and uncles and many, many cousins. My brother and sister have kids too. So I have seven nephews, but no nieces yet. Are your grandparents still alive? No, unfortunately, my grandparents died a long time ago. How often do you have family get-togethers? It's hard to get everyone together because my family live in different countries, but I try to get together with my brothers and sisters at least once a year. I'm lucky because we still all get on and enjoy each other's company. How would you describe yourself in comparison to your brothers and sisters? We all have similar traits. We're all pretty easygoing, thankfully but I might not be as outgoing as some of my siblings, but I don't think I'm the most reserved either. Do you get on with your in-laws? I have great brothers and sisters-in-law. I'm very lucky. My parents-in-law are pretty good too. We don't always see eye to eye and there can be some personality clashes from time to time, but that's quite normal, isn't it? Do you know anyone who's an only child? In fact, I have only one child in the family I created and his name is Kian. What are the pros and cons of being an only child, do you think? Oh, where do I start? I think there are benefits and drawbacks to being an only child. On the one hand, it's wonderful to have so many brothers and sisters to connect with and support you throughout your life. On the other hand, I've seen brothers and sisters who don't get along and don't have anything in common besides their parents. An advantage of being an only child is that they receive a lot of attention but that can be a disadvantage later on, as they might become more selfish or entitled adults. It's a balancing act as a parent to give them attention, but not so much that they become self-absorbed or unkind to others. Do you think couples will have just one child in the future? I think families will get smaller. More and more couples are having children later in life so it doesn't leave much time to have a lot of children. And I am noticing a trend for single child families nowadays. Now repeat after me. And wherever there's a gap, why don't you put your own answer in? There are five children in my family, three brothers and a sister. Where do you come in your family? The oldest? The youngest, or are you in the middle? I'm in the middle. I'm the middle child. I'm the youngest. I don't have any step siblings or half siblings. I have one step sibling and one half sibling. I have a big extended family. 
I don't have many relatives. I have five aunts and six uncles. I have no nieces and nephews. We have get togethers once a year. I am an only child. There are pros and cons to being an only child. I get on great with my in-laws. Do you remember this? Do you think couples will have just one child in the future? I think families will get smaller. Today, we're talking about future forms. The present continuous, be going to, and will and won't. The present continuous, as you probably already know, is formed with be, the verb be, plus the verb ing. So ing is always on the verb. We use it for future arrangements, things that we have already planned and organized. I'm traveling to Paris next week with my brother. Are you catching up with your family anytime soon? And we often use the present continuous for travel arrangements. I'm leaving for Ireland on Thursday and coming back next week, which is true by the way. We use be going to for future plans that have already been decided but maybe not organized or planned. I'm going to buy a house next year. I'm not going to visit my parents-in-law this Christmas. We can also use be going to for predictions, especially if we have proof or there is evidence of these predictions. Look at those clouds. I think it's going to rain. Federer is going to win this game for sure. He's two sets ahead. If you are thinking that the future with the present continuous and the future with be going to are very similar, you would be right. In fact, there's very little difference between them and we can often use either for future plans. If I was to make a distinction between the two of them though, it would be that be going to is used for future plans when you have decided but maybe not organized everything. And the present continuous is used when you have organized and planned it. Let's take these two examples. I'm going to get married next year. So I've made the decision to get married, but maybe I haven't organized everything just yet. I'm getting married next year. I've booked the venue and I've done a lot of the organizing. Now, funnily enough, the future with will and won't is not used so much for future plans. This is different to what you may have been taught in school, but we're going to leave a lot of the future plans for the present continuous and be going to. So let's look at how we do use will and won't. The future with will is used for instant decisions, decisions you make at the time of speaking. I'll have the fish please, or for offers, and suggestions. Your bags look heavy. I'll help you carry them. I'll take you to the airport if you want. Will we go to that new restaurant this weekend? We can also use it for future facts, predictions, and promises. This time next year, you'll have a baby. How exciting. I think you'll love my parents. They're so much fun. I promise I won't tell anyone. Now, all that's left to do is try the quiz to test your vocabulary on family and also your future forms grammar. How did you go on the quiz? I hope it was good and I hope you learned a lot today. And if you already knew this information, I hope it was a good review for you. If you want, answer the questions in the conversation in the comments below and I'll take a look. See you again next week for another intermediate lesson.